So why are we doing a show called Spoiler Alert? Don't you hate yeah. it when somebody goes to the movie and they come back and they're like, they, they're like, this movie's so good. And then they go on to tell you exactly how it ends. Yes, that's the worst. That is the spoiler. <laughs> that's the spoiler. It's like, well, why would I go see it now? You just told me what the what it is. Um, and so uh, right now we're in the midst of drama. Everything gets more and more dramatic day by day, hour by hour. We have new alerts, new closures. Uh, the outlook is going from bad to worse. The stock market hates uncertainty. It it can handle bad news more than it can handle uncertainty. And if you think about it, the stock market is just a collection of people. And so it responds oftentimes the way that many of us do, which is when there's uncertainty about the future, um, it starts looking pretty unhealthy. It looks like it's caught a, a bug the stock market has. Yeah. And so as a result, we, we are experiencing extreme volatility. Uh, there's sleeplessness, there's worry, and we're making bad choices. Um, and I know how the movie is going to end. Well, don't leave us hanging, Jason. How will it end? <laughs> now I want to know. Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I don't know the timeline. That's the piece that creates uncertainty. But what I do know is that things are going to recover. Um, and I do believe this. The entire world has come to depend on goods and services that businesses build and create. And overnight, we're not just all of a sudden going to wake up one morning and stop eating food. Uh, we're not, uh, women are not going to stop getting their hair and their nails done. I mean, my, my wife was, she was kind of, uh, because the salon here locally is closed and she's, she's freaking out a little bit. She's like, <laughs> she's like, this is not good. I mean, everything was fine until she couldn't get her hair cut. Now we, now we got a problem. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the world is going to recover from this. The economy is going to recover. Yeah, we just, the, the hard part is we don't know the time horizon on it. And so, but if we can use our imagination to look out into the future and to know how this thing is really going to end, is there going to be some government invention intervention? Yeah, there is. Is, uh, is there going to be a lot of volatility in the short term? Yes, there is. But one of my favorite quotes is, despite our greatest efforts, things will continue to get better. And while there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of unknowns right now, um, we can look back historically, Amelia. In fact, I found this really great piece by Guggenheim, and we'll include this in the show notes, but it talks about stock market volatility in particular. And uh, it's basically, uh, it talks about pullbacks and bounce backs. And so what it shows is that um, since 19, since December 31st, 1945, there have been um, 80 different times where the market has pulled back between 5 to 10%. There have been 29 occasions where it's fallen 10 to 20%. There have been 8 occasions where it's fallen 20 to 40%. And then there have been 3 times where it's fallen more than 40%. And the average time to recover in those different pullbacks or those different corrections or those different bear markets um, when the market dropped 20 to 40 percent decline, the average time to recovery in months was 15 months. Um, when the market declined more than 40 percent, that's happened three times since 1945, it was 58 months uh, was the amount of time to recovery. So that being said, you know, I think it's easy and we're all so good at using our imagination the wrong way. It's, we're also good at thinking of the absolute worst case scenario the, um, and trying to understand it from the worst case scenario. But if we started using our imagination for the best case scenario and saying, well, geez, well, how would that look if all of a sudden the best case happens? So let me give you a best case scenario. Let's say that um, next week, all of a sudden, one of the drug companies comes out and they have a vaccine or even better, they have a cure for this coronavirus. Well, that I can, I can uh, in my imagination, see where the economy would um, respond very favorably to that, and a lot of this fear and this panic would subside. Now, we haven't got that type of an announcement yet, but again, we haven't got the type of announcement that would cause people um, extreme fear and panic. These are scary times. I don't want to discount it. Uh, and we're all experiencing it. We're all in this together in terms of the fear. But um, the most important thing we can do is try to maintain our level thinking in times of extreme volatility. And so that's what we're encouraging people to do. We built a plan for people in the good times. And uh, when the bad times hit, we're going to stick to that plan 
unless there's some reason not to. And right now, those reasons don't exist. Uh, and it's one of the reasons I believe so strongly in the planning process. It's one of the reasons we're going to be doing something really radical yes. for our community. Yeah. And so that's the webinars that we have coming up. Um, we have another one scheduled for this Saturday. Uh, that's March 21st at, was it 1? 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Yep. Pacific Standard mm-hmm. Time. So you can go to Sound Retirement Planning dot com and register for that today. Yeah, and what I'm going to do is in case they in case they miss the live event is I'm going to put a recording up so people can go and watch a recording of the webinar. But the reason it's so important Amelia is because there's I heard somebody once say um when there's hope in the future, there's power in the present. Another way I've been saying it is when we have confidence in the future, there's power in the present in the present. And so what's happening right now is people are losing their hope in the future. They're losing their confidence in the future. And so when we can build a plan for people to help them know that the numbers are going to be okay, um, then what they start to do is they start to experience more confidence. And it's when confidence comes back that uh, at least the economic recovery is going to start to take root. Now, again, I just want to emphasize we are in unusual times. Um, the, the, I mean, the economy is being shut down and nobody's doing anything wrong here. You know, these businesses uh, did not do anything wrong. They're just having to shut down because we're trying to keep people safe. And so during the financial crisis, we had this, um, you know, this was, it was manufactured in the sense that people, the stock market was tanking because of the amount of debt and leverage and and dumb things that people were doing. That's not the case here. This is uh, a health concern. And so in order to respond to it and to try to keep people as safe as possible, the government's taking extreme actions, which is exactly what the government needs to do. Because if you think about it, we are the government, right? We are the yeah. ones that need to protect ourselves and one another. And we know that during the financial crisis, there was uh, initially, I think, $700 billion, over a trillion dollars that got pumped into the system to bail out the banks. So, of course, we as the government, we're going to step in and we're going to bail out each other. Um, and if it's a trillion dollars, we don't know what that number is, but we know that it's going to be big. It's going to be massive because that's the right thing to do. That is that is where we come together as a country to support one another financially through these times. And that's exactly what's going to happen, regardless of whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. When the financial crisis hit, uh, we, the government, we stepped in. We said, no, we need to, we need to make sure that our banking system's safe. Well, now we've got families that are uh, in crisis mode and uh, businesses that didn't expect to have to close their doors. They didn't do anything wrong. They were as prepared as they could be. But now we, as a government, are going to step in and we're going to create some safety nets for people. And the world's going to change. It's never going to be the same after this. And it's, but it's going to get better as a result of this. And that's, a, that's an exciting thing. Um, I just think if we keep our mind focused on the good things, if we try to fill our brains with the good things instead of just turning on the news and reading more negative and negative and negative, I mean, that's like digging through the garbage can looking for something good to eat. You know, yeah. you, you might find something, but chances are you're just going to have a whole handful of garbage. And if that's what you're feeding yourself, I, I can just about guarantee that it's not going to be uh, good for your, for your well-being, your mental well-being. Yeah. And Jason, this just reminds me of something you reminded me of just today is that we're all in this, we're all going through this together. Yeah. Like as scared or as, you know, nervous as it might be for me or you, I think we're all dealing with this at the same time. And I think that kind of brings the community together. And I've seen a lot of people working together to try and get, get through these things. So, yeah. And you know, it's unique because, um, I think it's really easy to think, Oh, how is this going to impact me individually? Right. Yeah. How's this going to affect my family? How's this going to affect the business? How's this going to affect the stock market? How's this going to affect my retirement? How's it going to affect the, uh, the investments, the IRAs and the 401ks and the TSP and all these things. And that's all le- legitimate concerns, but you're absolutely right. Sometimes we can think, oh, this is only happening to me. This yeah. is happening across the entire world, across not, and not just our country, but across the entire world, people are in the same boat. So I, you know, there's going to be massive things that happen. I don't know what all the massive things are going to look like, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I know that our governor just announced you're not going to be kicking anybody out of their house as a result of them not being able to make their mortgage or their rent payment. Um, I can see maybe part of the government bailout is going to be, hey, uh, you, maybe there people are going to say you're not going to have to make a mortgage payment um, for a couple of months or however, whatever it yeah. takes. I mean, we're going to come together as a people and we're going to get through this thing and we're going to be better as a result. Yeah. 